everyone, this is Ms. Moriarty, and I'm here to discuss with us our first topic of our new unit, which is Unit 2, uh, the Living World Biodiversity. So we're still talking about how living organisms interact with one another, but now we're going to mainly focus in on what that means in terms of biodiversity. So the first topic is introduction to biodiversity. This is broken down into three levels, um, genetic species and ecosystem or habitat diversity. Uh, ecosystem diversity is defined simply by the variety of ecosystems that we might find in a given region. So this might be uh, different types of habitats found in maybe a similar biome based upon latitude, temperature, and precipitation. Species diversity tells us that a variety of different types of species may be found in a given ecosystem. And genetic diversity is specifically looking at the variety of genes found in a population in a given species. Now, focusing on genetic diversity, this is the measurement of how different genomes or sets of genes are found in individuals within a population of a given species. There is genetic diversity in all populations due to random mutations when DNA is copied or recombined, um, especially during the formation of sex cells and chromosomes. But the more genetic diversity in a population, the better that population can respond to stressors. Those types of stressors can be things like drought, disease, or maybe even famine. Now, here is the what's called bottleneck effect. Uh, this is an environmental disturbance, usually caused by some sort of natural disaster, maybe human habitat destru uh, destruction, that's going to drastically reduce the population size um, and kills organisms regardless of what their genome may be. As a result, the surviving population tends to be very small, and because of this, individuals have died randomly. So it doesn't really represent the genetic diversity found in the original population. And so an event that caused as a bottleneck effect typically will reduce genetic diversity. And because that population is much smaller, less genetically diverse, it's far more vulnerable to any future environmental disturbances. Now, we said before that ecosystems, species, or genetic diversity tends to lead to a more stable ecosystem, stable population, um, and an individual's ability to survive. Well, that's because, right, it is resilient. How do we define resilience? It's the ability of an ecosystem to return to its original conditions after it has been disturbed. Some of those disturbances uh, may be things like windstorms, fires, floods, maybe even clear cutting. And remember, the higher amount of species diversity we see, higher ecosystem resilience. High species diversity typically means more plant species will repopulate, distribute, uh, I'm sorry, to uh, repopulate the disturbed ground. They may anchor the soil, provide food and habitat for animal species. And so that's why the more biodiverse, the better resilient. Now, how do we measure biodiversity in an ecosystem? There's a few different ways. One being what's called species richness. This refers to the number of different types of species found in a given ecosystem. Now, high richness is generally a good sign of ecosystem health. Right, there's more species available, which means that there's lots of quality resources like water and soil and nutrients. Another way we can measure biodiversity is through species evenness. This is a, the measurement of whether a particular ecosystem may be dominated by one or more species. And so you can kind of see that in the images here. We have community one versus community two. Uh, both of these communities seem to be high in their species richness. They do have a number of different uh, species. However, it looks like community one may have more species evenness compared to community two, which seems to be dominated by our species A. All right, everybody, that's it for our video. Please make sure to mark this as done and take your notes.